Hello there, members of the EDAP 689 Internet for P12 Teachers Building a PLN. Boy, what about, that's a title, isn't it? This will be our first class. This is Monday, June the 8th. Each day before class, I will have posted a much smaller version of this video. This video is essentially going to be the entire class for that day. Things that you need to know. First off, I've sent you an email that basically says our class will meet in ERTC 201C for Monday through Thursday and we will meet in 201G on Friday. I think I've already told you that our class meeting times will be from 9 to 5. But starting on Wednesday and Friday, our class meeting time will have to uh, end, I will have to end at 12 o'clock those two days to um, actually go teach another course. Now, the rules of the road are these. Rule number one, you are an adult. You will be treated as an adult. Therefore, each morning when we get to class at 9 a.m., I hope I'm getting this across, you will be um, inflicted with a presentation about the module for that day. So like today's module is called Who I Am and we will be working through a series of applications, Web 2.0 tools, that will allow you to demonstrate who you are and create your own little piece of the Internet. When I finish my presentation, you may work on the assignment for that day, and you can stay as long as you need to stay. If you finish the assignment and it's, say, 12 o'clock, 11.30, 1 o'clock, you may get up and leave. If you need to stay for the entire day, you certainly can. There's no problem. But rule one will always be in place. You're an adult. You're going to be treated like an adult. You can make adult decisions about how long you need to stay in class. Rule number two. Please, please, please use my text number that I've sent to you. 502-457-2937 for any emergencies, any clarifying questions, or anything that you need to contact me about to let me know if you're going to be late or if you're going to need to take the class um, and watch the video so you can um, go do something else that has already been planned, whatever. I just want you to contact me to let me know that. And please, in your first uh, text message, if you will, just put your name in there. That way I'll know who you are, and then I'll add you in to my um, contacts. Okay? So what we're going to do in this video is I'm literally going to walk through a PowerPoint about why a PLN. We're then going to look at in the PowerPoint examples of what we're going to be doing in class. Um, and then when we finish with that, I will then launch into building your first piece of your PLN, which will be your wiki space. You have to have a wiki space to be able to own a piece of the internet to then be able to corral all these resources that we're going to be working with uh, for the rest of the week and also to give you a platform that you can either send your colleagues to show them whom you are listening to, whom you use as resources, and whom you talk to. 
All of these will be housed in one location called a wiki. But first, let's review. We are in our Blackboard space, and as you can see, the Blackboard space entry point is this little thing that says, Welcome to EDAP 689. There's a video there about what PLNs are all about. I'll let you watch it, because if I try to play it and it tries to record it, it com comes out sounding rather nasty. Um, as you can see, I'm going to go over this uh, in just a second here, because this is what the PowerPoint is about. So without further ado, let me jump into the course documents. And I'm going to scroll down. This is our PowerPoint that we'll be looking at. So what is a PLM? Well, it's an acronym that stands for Professional Learning Network, or it can stand for Personal Learning Network. PLNs have been around as long as there has been networking, and I don't mean computer networking. I mean people-to-people -people networking. Um, George Siemens, who um, worked out of the uh, University of Alberta in Canada, has um, quite a long list of articles and books that he has written about what he calls P2P, person-to-person, people-to-people, how we build those kinds of networks where we talk to others, where we get understandings. And what we have seen so dramatically changed is that you do all that now through technology. Um, you, have a you have a personal learning network if you already have a Facebook page. Um, there's nothing really remarkable here. The remarkability is that we are going to build a one-stop shop, if you'd like to use that term, a piece of your, a, a piece of the internet that is yours, where all of these different tools can be located. So without further ado, what is it? I just told you. It's any group of people sharing the same profession or interest. This class is an example of PLN. And I certainly hope that you will add your classmates into your PLN when we start building. Your department is an example of a PLN. The, the line that I use is you can't have a PLC without people having PLNs. Because all the PLC then turns into is the same old, same old stuff that we have been doing forever in schools. The professional learning network is your way of hearing voices outside of school, outside of JCPS, or outside of whatever school district you work in. This is the point of the professional learning network, to hear from others. Now, having said that, then we have to realize that there are certain things that we've always done and we're going to be walking away from those in a lot of ways. I call this the five apostasies. What in the world is an apostasy? Well, first of all, let's look at this quote. If we cannot solve our problems without the same thinking we use when we created them, we have so dramatically changed in how we can interact with our profession now. We need to rethink what that can look like. So an apostasy is an essentially an abandonment of what one has voluntarily professed, a total desertion or departure from one's previous understandings or practice. What does this mean? Here they are, the five apostasies as relates to professional learning networks. Teachers no longer have to wait for a system to identify or solve their problems. They are empowered to do it themselves. Teachers in geographically isolated places are no longer intellectually or professionally isolated. You now have the power to reach out to hear what your profession and specifically 
what your professional organizations are writing about or thinking about. But you can also reach out to individuals who represent the ideas behind your profession. You can subscribe to their blogs, you can subscribe to their podcasts. All of this can be done through your piece of the internet, a thing called a wiki that we are going to create. Teachers can have their own professional questions and problems solved now, not at a predefined space and time. We don't have to wait for that PD. And if we can convince the powers that be, and some are doing this, PDs can be housed somewhere where you can reach them and have them link to your professional learning network. We can harness the collective intelligence rather than being restricted by our prescriptive job titles. Well, there's a mouthful. What it basically means is you're crowdsourcing. You're going out and you're finding what people are thinking about, what they're writing about. And you're not restricted then by the flow, as I call it, the paper that comes from on high, where people are telling you what to do. You are finding out what is really happening within your profession. And as I said, you're now crowdsourcing content, knowledge, and ideas. These are powerful things that you can do through a professional learning network. We call this a frictionless medium. And it has so dramatically changed because in the past, we've always had to be in a certain place at a certain time to listen to a certain person explain to us what we should be or should not be doing. With Web 2.0 tools and the internet, all that can go away. And now we have a very simple way. Once built, it constantly feeds to us information. A frictionless media for communication. It keeps the conference energy alive, or in this case, your classroom energy alive. It keeps that conversation going. It opens up new ideas, new resources to you to use in your classroom. It keeps the conversation moving. Why should we email when all we need to do is to empower Twitter to capture what people are thinking that it comes to us? don't have to go to them. And we move from the one-to-one, -one, one expert telling you, to you being one to many, where you hear from many people and share to many people. So the main idea of this is something called knowledge management. Sorry if the screen is a little, a little truncated at the top there. But what knowledge management is about is it says connect people to quality knowledge as well as people to people in order to increase understanding. This is very much a George Siemens idea. The idea here is, is that knowledge, quality knowledge, is how we get people to develop their new understandings. I think the term that you're hearing a lot is enduring understanding. How do we develop enduring understandings? Well, we have to we have to have practice. We have to have the ability to hear and see what others are talking about. And this is not set in stone. And I think this is part of the problem that people have with a PLN. They think I'm going to go out and do this and I'll be done. Well, yes, beginning you do. But it should evolve, it should change. You might quit following someone because you find that their ideas don't really match with what you need. You might add more. You might realize that having 20 people that you're following on Twitter is overwhelming, so you just cut it down to five. And that's fine. And 
the thing that we try to do in this course is the next one. How learning content is used and distributed by learnings might be more important than how it is designed. And so what we're doing is we're building this one location, a wiki, that will then become the location for all of our PLN material. And so the design of how Twitter works is supplemented by the fact that it is in one location along with other types of information like RSS and curation sites like Scoopit and Pinterest. And finally, all this is possible because of the rapid development of those Web 2.0 concepts. So here's the stages of a PLN membership. We're going to begin by lurking and skimming. In other words, we kind of get it and we start looking around. Our first step out might be that we actually ask someone in a Twitter account. We might then move to giving help and opinions. We actually might start something. We might join every social network possible, and then we become overwhelmed and drop the whole darn thing. I hope that what we will do by the end of this week is to find the right balance and to stress to you the need to constantly change. So the main tools and the main idea of all this is something called TPAC. Again, I apologize for the truncation TPAC stands for Technology Pedagogical Content Knowledge. And this is an entire class, and we're not going to spend too much time on it. I just wanted to pull one of my favorite uh, sentences, phrases, from um, the two researchers, Punya and Kohler. Uh, they made a very large presentation about this in 2008. And there's a lot of things that we can pull from it, but here's the one that I think really speaks to what we're trying to do here. Affordances, and an affordance is anything that allows you to do anything else. Affordances that teachers create through playful interaction with their curriculum. Now playful here is a term that basically says finding things that work and then sharing them with others but having the time and the space to create this is what the TPAC message for our PLN is about. And so this is where we start, Wikispace. We're gonna build this today. Let me show you what it can look like. Um, I would say that this is probably an excellent example of what we're going to be doing so we can look real fast here at the parts. As you can see in Rosalind's Wikispace that she created last summer, what she has done is create a page for each one of the modules that we will be working with. And on our first page, which is called Who I Am, Rosalind has created a little Vokey that we're going to create. And if we click on that Vokey. Hello, I'm Ms. Ruxdale. This is my PLN to collaborate with high school English teachers across the world. Her Vokey can speak. This is her little movie that she made about why she became a teacher. Ms. Ruxdale, we're so excited that you are interviewing for this scholarship. Tell us, first, why you decided to become a teacher. I grew up in a teacher family. My grandmothers were teachers, and my mom is a teacher too. I guess I always felt like it was what I was supposed to do. I guess I always felt like I was just supposed to be a teacher, so that's what I said I was going to do. Then, in high school I volunteered at an after-school tutoring program for impoverished youth. That was sort of a turning point when I realized that I wasn't just supposed to teach, 
but that I actually enjoyed working with kids. The students were so appreciative of my efforts to help them, and I looked forward to seeing them every week. What has been the biggest challenge of teaching? Learning to balance my personal time and professional time. I have a tendency to put all of my effort into my work and my studies and leave little time for myself. What has been the greatest pleasure of teaching for you? The greatest pleasure has been getting to know students on a personal level as well as academic. I love hearing about their lives and letting them know that there's an adult that will support and advocate for them. Ms. Ruxdale, thank you so much for coming in for the interview. You seem to be a great candidate for this scholarship. We will be in touch shortly. So there's Roz's story about how she became a teacher. And finally, we have down here her blogster that she created that is an electronic uh, poster board, if you will, about why she wanted to become a teacher. I'm sorry, about what she does as a teacher. And then further down this page, this is her reflection that is expected for each one of our um, modules that we do. And then down here at the bottom is what we call a revolver globe, which essentially says who has come and visited this page. And then right above it is a little indicator that says that she's had 10 people visit her page so far. Okay. So that's a wiki space, and that's what we're going to build today. Whoops, sorry, I flipped through that like crazy. What we will do on Tuesday is we will be looking at Twitter. And Twitter, of course, is, everyone knows what Twitter is, but do we know how to build it so that it actually reflects who we need to be connected to, and who we need to learn from? And the power of it is, is there are so many different groups that have professional Twitter accounts that really do feed us good stuff. On Wednesday, we'll be looking at something called RSS. And the power of RSS is that it allows you to subscribe to blogs, wikis, actually you can, just to, you can subscribe to just about anything, podcast. You can have videos sent to you. You can have audio files. You can have written work. And the power of, of having an RSS is, just like having a subscription to anything, on a regular basis, it updates and gives you new information. And finally, we're going to learn how to do curation. Uh, curation is one of those things that um, is really misunderstood. And one of the things that I love about curation um, is that, like with my Scoop It account, I can literally have a, an electronic magazine that when I want to drop into it and see what others are thinking about, and I can literally make the magazine about anything I want, so it can have multiple meanings. Um, I then literally can sit there and flip through the various uh, groups and, and that I belong to and see what's going on. Uh, another one of these you may have heard of is something called Flipboard, which is an app that can uh, be put on your iPads. Pinterest, we all know about Pinterest. Pinterest is one of those crazy, wacky, wonderful things that um, I frankly have not really gotten into. But there are others who think the world of Pinterest. Um, the ability to pin things that you uh, have found. Um, the thing that I like about Pinterest is how easy it is to use, but the thing I like about Scoop It is how lazy I can be. That once I set it up, it just starts delivering me things. So I just want to run through these next few rather quickly because this is presentation will be there for you. Um, as you can see, we can build our own Twitter account and then I hope you're starting to see where the power of it is, because now we can embed that Twitter into our wiki space.
Jesus. And then here are some of the groups that you can join. And this is no, by any stretch of the imagination, the last of this list. This is what the fun part is, is going out there and searching and literally putting in very specific search topics and finding what might exist out there to add to your Twitter. It's just as simple as, I'll add this one. This one's really not giving me what I thought it was going to give me. And so you quit. You, you unfollow it. RSS is probably where it all began. Um, and one of the things that I find so fascinating about RSS is how incredibly simple it is to set up once you understand what's running behind it. And of course, we'll spend a morning talking about it. And again, as I said, um, this is one of my favorite tools is curation tools. I'm just not very good at Pinterest. I'm very good at scooping. So this is where you get to make a choice. You can either use a scooping or a Pinterest, either one. And I've already explained to you how it works, or scoop it anyway. And Pinterest is an online service that, again, allows you to share images through social media. And as you can see, it's used for a lot of different things. So I'll end it with this quote from a streetcar named Desire. I've always relied on the kindness of strangers. It is fascinating to me how that once we join these organizations, once we start following others, our next step is to not be afraid to ask for questions or to ask for help. And then it's amazing how your PLN comes back to you with answers to your questions, with ideas, with resources. So maybe what we need to do is to quit calling these personal and professional learning networks and start calling them passionate learning networks. Now we can start asking our network and get recommendations. We can find resources much simpler. And we can make the interwebs human again, to realize that all these powerful resources are out there, that we can tap into them, that we then have one central place where it all can live that we can come back to. So where do we start? What is our beginning point for building a professional learning network? We're going to own a piece of the internet. We're going to own that piece of the internet through something called a wiki. Now, wikis were designed by a guy by the name of Jimmy Wales, um, who was a surfer dude, who basically wanted to build a way for people to work together to collect knowledge. He created a platform called a wiki. The apocryphal story is that wiki is a Hawaiian word, remember he was a surfer dude, uh, that he picked up that the, at the cab stands at Honolulu Airport that the, uh, when you needed a cab they would wave and call wiki wiki, which supposedly meant quickly quickly. As I said, this is apocryphal. But Jimmy Wales did go on to found, create something called Wiki Spaces. Sorry. He founded Wikipedia, uh, which was his idea how we were going to all hold hands, sing Kumbaya, and build the world's knowledge together. What came out of that, besides a lot of headache for social studies teachers over first uh, resources, primary sources, um, when kids were using Wikipedia instead of going to primary resources, we have something called a wiki. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a wiki. 
this is going to be our piece of the internet that belongs to us. And so to start this, we need to go to wikispaces.com. We are educators, so we're going to be going in through the education link. So click on that. And the first thing it wants to do is it wants you to create a Wikispaces classroom. Now, we're not going to use the classroom side of this, but I'll show you how to change all that in just a minute. So I'm going to create a free classroom. This is not a free, dumbed down, doesn't really do everything kind of classroom. This has all the functionalities. It is yours to use for whatever you want to use it for. So the first thing I have to do is I have to give a name of my wiki. For our purposes, the easiest way to do this is to put in your last name, ELN. Remember, you want to this is you are creating an actual address, a location on the web. So we certainly don't want something as long as Steve Swan, University of Louisville's Professional Learning Network. That would just be crazy to try to remember. So I'm just going to call it Swan ELN. And then my space on the web will now be called swanpln.wikispaces.com. As you can see, I'm telling it that I'm in the United States. I can even tell it uh, what school I go to. Um, if you can't get your school to show up, let's put in a couple here just to see what happens. There it is. So if I put in that I teach at Seneca High School in Louisville, Kentucky, it, it finds it. Well, I teach at University of Louisville, so I'm going to leave that. Um, if you want to put in here that you teach social studies or science or whatever, you can. Or you can leave it out. Put in your grade. So I'm going to put in, I'm an adult education. Now, make sure you put the check in about what you're going to, uh, that you'll be using this for education, and then you click Create. Oh, forgot to make the box check. Now, it's telling me that my name is already in use, and I realize that. So, because I have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of wikis. So I'm going to have to make one that's a little bit longer. But I don't want you to do that. I want you to keep yours very, very concise. Let's see if it likes that one. Now, one of the steps that I did skip, and I apologize, is I had already logged in once to this site, so it understands who I am. So let me back out of here, all the way out, and show you what the one hoop that you'll have to jump through that I just kind of avoided. And so I'm logged out, and I'm now going to go back in to education. And the first step I have to do is to create a username and password. And so to do that, I'm going to create a username. And I'm going to put in a real email. This is so that Wikispaces knows that I'm an educator. And then I'm going to put in a password. As you can see, 
I've I've done this so many times. Um, it it just keeps kicking me out because how many different ways can I torture my email, etc. So at this point, once I've created it, the steps that we were looking at before now kick in, and you would go through and give give it a simple name, last name pln dot Go through, find your school. If you can't find your school, use University of Louisville, uh, grade, uh, subject if you want, and then create. I'm going to jump out and come back in to what it looks like uh, from the uh, perspective of what you're seeing now. So I'm going to pause for a second, and then I'll come right back. All right, we're back. I am now at the point where you should be you have created an account, you have created your first wiki, you've named it, you've done all those things to it. Now you're ready to actually start working within it. Now, by default, Wikispaces always puts you into what it calls the Wikispaces classroom. Uh, we don't want to be a classroom. Uh, this is what you would use if you were going to um, use it with your classroom, obviously, but this is what you would use if you were inviting people in to actually work within the wiki. Now, as you get more and more comfortable with the use of your PLN, you might want to invite people to actually be a part of your wiki. But for right now, we're going to change the way this looks so that it becomes much simpler for us to build our PLN within it. To do that, I'm going to go up here to the upper right to where it says settings and I'm going to click on that and it's going to allow me to go in and change everything and anything about my wiki. By the way, the nice thing about this is once you start working within your wiki, if you want to go in and make changes, in other words you decide on a different look for it, you can go ahead and do it and you don't hurt anything. Isn't that great? But the first thing we want to do is come down here to Settings General. And we want to change the application type from being a classroom to being a wiki. So I'm just going to click on that. That's all I have to do. If I want to have discussions, I can allow that, but for right now we're going to say, no, we, we don't need discussions because everything we put on our Wikispace pages will be, could be used to talk back to where discussions are going on in, say, Twitter or through our RSS or through our Pinterest or Scoopit account. So I'm going to say no here for no discussion pages. Now, one of the things that it <laughs> people get a little nervous about this next one. It says, allow search engines to index my wiki. And people, are, people will say to me, are you saying that Google could find my wiki? Absolutely, Google could find your wiki. And so if I told someone that my um, wiki is called Swan PLN, just put it in Google, it'll come up. Guess what? It will. If you leave this check-in. Now, if you really see the power of this, and you want to start using it in a professional manner, in other words, you can say to people, if you want to come visit and see what I'm thinking and reading and talking about, I will show you here in a minute how you can tag your wiki so that it becomes even more uh, searchable and people can find it. That's called S-E-S-O, CISO, Search Engine Search Optimization. And tags is how the internet runs. It's all about the metadata. Metadata is data about data. And so you can make your wiki more easily found if you will just employ some tags. So I always put the check in there. If you're actually using your wiki with students or others, you want to turn on SSL so that all of your pages are transmitted securely. Um, for right now, we don't need to worry about that because we're not going to be doing anything like that. 
but down the road, if you are actually have students involved in a wiki, you always want to turn on SSL. And the last one is one of the most fascinating ones. This is called Google Analytics. So if you have a Google account, it does not have to be associated with this wiki in any way, shape, or form. It's just a turnkey that gets you in the door for using Google Analytics. So I have a Google Gmail account. It's steveswan53 at gmail.com. If I put that in here, what I'm essentially doing is I'm asking Wikispaces to use my analytics ability in Google to actually give me data about what's going on with my wiki. So what can you find out, you ask? <laughs> Lordy mercy. You can find out how many people have come and visited your wiki page. Uh, you can see that over a pre-described time limit. If you want to see the last month, if you want to see last week, if you want to see for the entire year. Again, a powerful tool that engages the power of Google to give you back information about your wiki. Now, there's no, to be af no need to be afraid here. It's not like you're giving away things. Your information will be clearly visible to anybody who wants to see it anyway. So turning on analytics just gives you that one more little touch of being able to have the world, you are able to see how the world sees you. All right, so we've done all these changes. Let's review real fast. We have, have a name. Oh, wait a minute. I want to change the name of my wiki. I gave it a stupid name. I was just, you know, wasn't paying attention to what Steve was saying. Oh, no problem. Right there. That's where you can change it. Now realize, if you change it to one that's already taken, it'll tell you that. So you'll have to play around with this a little bit. If you have a last name that's very common, like Smith, and so your title might be Smith PLN, you might get, it'll, it might give you a little bit of headache. So what you would do is you want to look at what you teach and make that possibly a part of your um, PLN title. So uh, it might be Swan Technology PLN, something like that helps you out. Description. Let's put that in while we're here. So I always have to go back and check my spelling. There we are. All, this, by the way, is what would show up um, in a search box if someone put it in. So, you know, be a little careful here, <laughs> as I just did. So when all this is done, save. Next thing we want to drop down to is permissions. And this gets a little um, confusing. So I'm going to try to make it as simple as I can. So on, what you would have to do here is you want to make sure that you have your wiki protected. Now, you can make yours a private but then for the only way that I would be able to see it is I would have to join your wiki. It's much better if you make it protected. As you can see here, people can see your pages, but only members of the wiki can actually do anything to those pages. You never, 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 one more never, want to make your wiki public. Okay, just don't even look at it. It's just off the, off the uh, table. So we're going to make ours protected. Now, because I have already um, had Wikispaces confirm that I'm a real person, it allows me to do this without further ado. 
but what you're going to have to do at this time is you're going to have to click on the link that basically um, wants you to give it a phone number of your cell phone and then it will call you back and give you information that you put in so that it can uh, make sure that you exist okay and I would love to show you how that works but like I said I have um, already done this 137 times I think and so it knows who I am by now so you're gonna make it protected you're gonna click on the link it'll be right out here that'll let you go in and confirm that you exist by phone uh, and then it'll it'll change this to protected for you I'm going to update because that's the only thing really I needed to change here and now I'm going to go over here my final step in my wiki uh, creation is I'm going to click on themes and colors so this is where you can change the look of your wiki um, you can even go so far as to change the colors that are here so like let's say I pick this one I can come down here and I can change the colors that are for the banner and for the sidebar navigation etc if I want to make it really different looking and I can preview that so that I know what it's going to look like um, so this is where you can make all those changes And then I can preview and customize. I can go nuts here with how I want this thing to look. Finally, when I'm done, I'll do an apply. And now my wiki has a look to it. A lot of teachers use this spiral notebook one over here. Don't know why, because to me it throws all the settings and the links and everything up here at the top. I kind of lean more toward the uh, classic look of the navigation. Um, pain being on the left or the right like I picked down here that's it so let's review real fast we went in and we turned off the fact that by default it wants to be a classroom we said we want it to be a wiki we double checked our name to make sure this is the name that we want if we need to change it we can this becomes your piece of the internet. We put in a description, and this will come up when we, if we were to do a search for our Wikispaces page through a Google or a Bing or any other search engine. We turned off having discussion pages because we really don't want that feature turned on right now. Um, discussion pages are when you would like to have people actually being a part of your wiki. And right now what you're wanting to do is to just build it we did that we did say that we would turn wait, that we would turn on the ability for search engines to find us which is really kind of cool um, and then finally if we had a Gmail account we put that in here to turn on um, Google Analytics and then finally we saved everything the second thing we did was we went to permissions and we changed it to being a protected so that people can actually find it uh, but they can't interact with it they can't do anything with your wiki and then lastly we came down here to themes and colors and we decided how we wanted it to look now cannot stress enough to you that all of this can be changed at any time you don't have to stick with a certain look as you can see I just did I changed the way mine looked all right so I'm going to click on wiki home 
And now it's waiting for me to do something on my first page. To turn on using our wiki space on any page that we create, we want to click on edit. Edit basically now turns the page on live and I can do anything I want on this page. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all of this placeholder text. Now there's something we need to understand about the web. The web hates what we would call in math the null set. In other words the web hates truly nothing because we know zero is not nothing. Zero is an integer. Zero actually means something. But the null set means that there's really nothing there. The web hates that there's nothing there. So every time you create a new page, you will have a placeholder text that's put there so that it can actually exist. So if you try to get ahead of the curve here and create pages, which I'm going to show you how to do, um, but you forget to put anything on that page, it can be just a placeholder text, page one, page two, page three. You will when you go to save it, it won't save it because there's nothing there. So I've highlighted all this placeholder text. I'm going to use my backspace key or delete key to get rid of it. This is my TLN journey about who I am as So I have begun by putting in the first piece of our module. And we'll jump back. And as you can see, when we go into our course modules, the first one that we're going to be talking about is who I am. And so I'm going to mirror all of that in my wiki space. So my first page is about who I am as a teacher. And if I now save that, you will see that that is what is now my first page. I can edit this in a whole bunch of ways. I can go in and highlight it just like I would any word processor. And I can bold it by clicking on the B. I can italicize it by clicking on the I. I can underline it by clicking on the U. I'm going to click on text. And I can change the font. I can change what it looks like. I'm going to click Arial Black. I might want to change the size of it so that it really shows up and you can see down at the bottom. I can play around with text color. I can play around with background color. I can tell it to be centered if I wanted to on the page. Vertical position I can make it subscript, superscript, and strike through. These are all word processing terms you should be familiar with. But I'm going to apply the style, and there you can see that it has put me in the center page. Very simple. Now, let's go across this toolbar. This thing here that says normal, this is holdover from HTML. What you're playing with here is strictly very simple, what I call flat HTML. And the power of it is whatever code or whatever product we want to put on here, it's a very, very, very simple process to do. We're going to do that. Um, this is left over, and basically what it was used for is in how you would write HTML. You would use something called carrots, and within the caret then you gave it an HTML code meaning and then you then would put whatever uh, was going to happen to the writing that came afterwards and then you would put an, another set of carrots at the end that turned whatever you did on and off. So if I wanted to have this text be bold, what I would do is, uh, if I were working within HTML, is I would have caret, the word bold, close carrots, then all my writing, caret, bold again, and then carry it again, and then it would turn it off. 
but in wiki spaces they make that all very simple for you to do using this alrighty um, the next ones over are for creating list of things our good old bulleted list and our good old numbered list we know about that the next one over is to put a line a horizontal rule this is straight out of HTML guys so if I want to separate things on my page if I click this it then creates a line that's all it does um, link is how I can link to uh, websites or other pages within my wiki space a file lets me actually upload a picture into my wiki space so I might use this to actually go out and find a picture of me I'm in uh, my Dropbox and I'm looking around for pictures of me and I think the one that I want to use is called small let's see if it's here there it is and so I'm going to open that and as you can see what happens is it brings it in and that's you see that it's spinning over here now I'll know it's in when I can actually see it and what I'm showing this to you is this is one of the things you need to understand about wikis you can't drag things around on the screen so let me go ahead and, and click on this to actually place it and there I am now if I want to move that around on the screen I can't okay so you have to pay attention to where your cursor is when you put things on the screen if you're going to put your own pictures this will apply for using of widgets here in just a second I want to show you that I can though I can make my picture smaller just by sliding down here and I can do different alignments with it if I want to put it in the center to the left to the right and if I want to put a caption, I can do that too. Let's put my name. Okay. Now, you'll notice that it made all of this up here kind of jump around, didn't it? And so I may have to go back in here and play around with my alignment. And as you can see, it also changed the size so I might have to play with that a little bit as you can see this is pretty much a hands-on work with text work with everything um, but I can't move things around on the page like I can in say PowerPoint so I have to be aware of where things are ending up now the next one over is the one that we would use, we're going to be using throughout our class. This is called widgets. Now, looking down the side here, these are all the different kinds of widgets that you can use. And as you can see, one of these is one that we're already uh, kind of familiar with because I've already talked about it. It's called an RSS feed. And what you can do here is, once you understand where the RSS feed lives in any web page, any podcast, any blog, you can put that here and you can tell it, I want you to have only so many entries from this RSS feed. I also want you to tell me what it's about. And down here, I can say how many, how long I want the characters to be. Now, I just leave that blank. I can show links, I can show dates, I can show authors. Oh my goodness gracious, if there's video and audio, I can show all that. Isn't that amazing? We'll talk about this later. Let's go back to that widget again. Here's where we get crazy because it's just so, so cool. 
This is called Other HTML. This is where you find something called the embed code. Once you have embed code, you own that piece of the web that you have created. You can get embed codes for everything we're going to play with in this class. And all you do is you copy the embed code and you paste the embed code. That's all you have to do. And then whatever it is that you went out and found, that could be YouTube videos, that can be your Twitter account, that can be anything that has an embed code. Today we're going to use embed codes for Vokies, GoAnimates, Globsters. We're going to put counters on our page. We're going to do a globe that actually shows you where people, when they come to visit your page, where they're from. All these things are done using a very simple tool called embed code. I'm going to show you how to use it. So, so far, all I've done is I've given sort of a title to this page. I put my picture on it because, yeah, why not? And now I'm going to save it. And there it is. There's my first creation inside my wiki. Now we're going to move on from here and we're going to put a Loki, a GoAnimate, a Glogster, counters and globes. We're going to put all this on this first page. A lot of stuff. Be right back. All right. So I want to make sure that you're comfortable with this first part where we have built ourselves a wiki space. What I will do is I'm going to stop this video and then we'll start another video that will be the pieces that we're going to be putting on this first part of our wiki space. So let's go back and review what those will be because it's all in here. If I go back to my Blackboard space and I go to where my course modules are located, under our first module of who I am, let's read what that says. So for this particular piece, we're going to be creating for our Wikispace home, who I am. We're going to create a Voki, a Glogster that illuminates who or what you teach, a digital story about how you came to become a teacher and your philosophy. Um, we're not going to do the Padlet because it really doesn't work that well anymore. Um, but we will go ahead and put a 3D revolver globe and counter. Uh, then you're going to be expected to read these three um, articles here. They're not very long, won't take you long. And then the idea is on your wiki page, you're going to write your reflection about this first idea about what is building a professional learning network all about and how we can grow it. So the next video that I'll be sending you, by the way, all these videos will be in the module spaces. Um, you will, we will start working on our first piece and that will be creating a Voki. I think you're going to have fun with this. I hope you are. Uh, I've already eliminated one of the modules so that if we, we don't get jammed up, uh, so that if we have to take the time on Tuesday um, that we don't start right in with the Twitter, uh, we can go back and review Module 1 as a part of what we're doing. Alrighty, so this is the first piece, and you will be receiving three more of these on how to create a Voki, how to create a GoAnimate, and how to create a Glogster. I will talk to you in a bit.